Ashin, tell us more. Uh, what can we expect? Yes, yes, Pandong. Well, here I am at Beijing Aerospace Control Center. Um, this is also known as China's cradle for space heroes, being the headquarters of astronaut training uh, and research center. And later, I'm going to enter the building of the Space Flight Control Center. It has witnessed almost Chinese every uh, launch, landing, transmission between Earth and space, and spacewalks, you name it. So in just three hours, we'll be witnessing this live stream of a class from the space station led by the Shenzhou 13 Taikonauts Wang Yaping, uh, Jai Zhigang, and Ye Guangfu. So it's actually uh, the Wang Yaping's second time to conduct a science lecture in space. Last time was back in 2013 uh, when, as you just mentioned, more than 60 million students join in via a live streaming. Um, and you know, among those students, uh, some, of, some of them have already graduated from college, and some have even entered the field you know, uh, to start a career, which is, which is cool. So I think this point of the class is to uh, encourage more students to join in. Uh, and you know, here comes the most important part. So about the class, actually technicians said that this time the class will be more substantial, and the picture quality and the transmission speed uh, have both been uh, improved uh, and about about the class as far as I am concerned uh, that before it's on the Tycho Notes will first show us an overview of uh, their uh, life and work in, in orbit uh, so we'll be seeing their bedrooms dining halls exercise area as well as the workplace which is cool so uh, later it comes uh, with the scientific research uh, experiments very simple experiments though um, about you know in especially in the microgravity environment Environment. And actually to see, to let viewers to see this, uh, you know, differences between Earth and space environments, there will be simultaneous experiments here on Earth at Beijing Science and Technology Museum, where my colleague Li Jianhua is right there uh, to join us to, you know, to witness this live stream later. So let's talk to Jianhua. Maybe Jianhua can tell us more about the classes. Jianhua. Yes, Jiaxin and Pandeng, everyone is getting ready right now and the media and the students will coming into that venue uh, behind me from the gate and we know that the lecture will be conducted from around 300 kilometers from the planet Earth and of course, as Jiaxin said, my colleague said that there will be three Chinese astronauts giving this lecture this time, uh, including Jai Jigan, we know that he is the first Chinese man that walks in space and also Wang Yaping, Wang Yaping is the first female that walks in uh, space and also uh, she has a PhD in psychology which provides her with strong academic background in providing such a lecture. Of course when it comes to uh, the live demonstration and, and of course to the three Chinese astronauts will show us around the inside of the Tianhe Cool module. They're going to show students uh, the regular stuff they do including how they eat and how they drink and how they sleep. They have to strap themselves down uh, just in case that they would have float around in their sleep. Of course they also going to show students how microgravity, the environment of zero gravity would have on their bodies including uh, muscle losses and what they need to do to prevent uh, themselves from losing muscles including the regular exercises they have to do and also they're going to show the students the uh, specifically designed suits for Chinese astronauts to prevent from muscle losses. Of course there will be a slew of experiments that we will do, some of them uh, they have preserved from the previous uh, live space-based class back in 2013. And of course there is something new this time, including the first one, that is how they turn around in space. And now I can turn around on the ground. Of course we don't have to, we, we can't take it for granted in space. And let's, uh, it's common sense, but let's not forget that the target audience this time uh, is the primary school and also high school students. Of course some of them have already graduated from college and also they're going to have this uh, experiment that is they're going to show students the cardiac muscle cell cultivation in space this time and they are new and then some of the experiments that they have already done 
in the previous space space class, including uh, the loss of buoyancy force and water surface tension, and also the water balloon optical uh, experiments. And of course, the students uh, there were there will be uh, tons of students participating in the live video communication after the live demonstration. Students on the ground in Beijing and also in South China's Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, and there students from Southwest Sichuan and also two special administrative regions, including Hong Kong and Macau. They will ask these uh, Chinese astronauts some questions. I'm pretty sure there will be tons of interesting questions from these curious students. I'm also I'm quite jealous of them. Back to Pandang. Thank you very much. Our reporters Li Jianhua and Liu Jiaxing in Beijing. In June 2013, China conducted its first space class. The course was aimed at promoting space education to young Chinese students. The instructors were crew members of the Shenzhou Tam mission led by Taikonaut Wang Yaping. Now we look back on that historic lecture given by her as China's first woman to walk in space this year. One teacher in space. Over 60 million students on Earth. A nearly 50-minute class began with a demonstration. With the help of her two colleagues, Taikonaut Wang Yaping led China's first science lesson from space. Through live streaming, they broke down basic physics in a microgravity environment to children across the country. Their lessons involved five experiments aimed at showing real-life applications of scientific principles in space. There are 60 million students from 80,000 schools nationwide watching this live stream. This is really good to help teenagers get interested in science and unravel the mysteries of space. This is a pioneering class. Some students found it enlightening as the class allowed them to witness some theories in action. These were things they said they could only imagine up until that moment. A Q and A segment was held during the class in a test to the Tianlian Relay satellite. The Chinese homegrown satellite was built for real-time communication between space and ground control, and the purpose of the class seems to have been fulfilled. Some students say they felt inspired to further explore space after interacting with actual people in space. This made me feel the significance of teaching in space. Many children have gotten interested in spaceflight because of this. Some have applied as aerospace majors, and some have even become my colleagues already. This has made me feel very proud. In an interview one month before Wang set off again for China's space station this year, she recalled how some children asked for another class. Most of them weren't born yet at the time she gave her first lesson in space. She said this is one thing that's been driving her to go back. This time, the space station mission will be longer, and the space will be larger. So I'll definitely do something on science education for the children again. Now finally back in space, Wang says she's ready to assume a role of teacher again, along with her other grander tasks of helping build China's space station. Yerard Fermak, CGTN.